Alright, we're going to go ahead and take a look at what the first derivative tells us about um, a, a graph. Okay, So this is just kind of a conceptual um, thing that we're going to do right now. So um, let's say here's this function f of x right here. Okay, um, The first derivative, as we've talked about before, derivative is a general rule for the slope of a function. Okay, So there's some terms that I'm going to use that you need to be very familiar with right now. Okay. So one thing uh, that a first derivative tells us uh, is where a function is increasing or decreasing. Now, that's increasing and decreasing is um, directly related to slope. Okay, increasing is another way of saying positive slope. Decreasing is another way of saying negative slope. But in calculus, you generally see the words increasing or decreasing versus positive slope or negative slope for whatever reason. So <clears throat> this function f, for instance, um, where where the slope is positive which is where the, you know, as you look to the graph from left to right, as the, the y values of the function get larger, basically, okay? So you can see that is happening, you know, right, right here, okay? On this section of the graph, and it happens again at this section of the graph over here, okay? So again, from, I'll, I'll call this like x equals a right here, how about this x equals b? It looks like from negative infinity up till a, this graph is, you know, increasing. The, the values uh, of the, the y values are getting larger. Same thing happens from b on. Okay, so during those times where the graph is increasing, the slope is positive. Okay, so in other words, the derivative is positive. Slope and derivative very much mean the same thing. So one thing we can say is that f is increasing. F is increasing when f prime is greater than zero. That is huge. That will be used throughout calculus right there. You have to remember that. That concept is big. Now, decreasing would be where, when you move from left to right, the y values decrease in value. So that would happen between a and b, okay? You can see that the, the values are, are going down, okay? And during that, on that interval right there, the slopes are negative, okay? So the derivative is negative. So, one way to say this is f is decreasing when f prime is less than zero. Remember, f prime just is a you know notation for derivative. So this is another way of saying f is decreasing when the derivative of f is zero. I'm sorry, is less than zero. Um, so those two things are just huge. Okay, that's the main thing where the derivative tells us f prime tells us whether or not f is increasing or decreasing. So to determine whether f is de increasing or decreasing, you have to find out whether f prime is positive or negative. Okay. Another thing it tells us, and this is really the first derivative test, is it helps us identify relative extrema. Okay. Now relative extrema, um, or local extrema sometimes called, is referring to local uh, or relative minimums or maximums. So in this case, this graph right here would have a relative a relative maximum, also a lot of times just call it relative max, at x equals a. So you can kind of think of a relative maximum as like a hilltop, okay? And the reason it's a relative maximum, you'll notice that, you know, over here, these y values are actually larger than the value at x equals a. It's, it's relative to the interval that it's in. If you were to you know, identify an interval kind of around a, that is the largest value at that peak right there. When I say the largest value, the, the graph of f has the largest y value at x equals a in that um, you know, relative region. So that's a relative maximum. Now what happens at a relative maximum, let's look and see what happens to this graph of f. To the left of a, the graph of f has a positive slope, is increasing. Okay, its derivative is positive. To the right of a, the graph of f is decreasing. The derivative then becomes negative. So, the first derivative test says that, um, let's, let's see here, I'll, I'll use that value a. So f has a relative max, so rel max, relative max, okay, relative max at x equals a, let me just kind of bullet these here, because this is going to be two lines, f has a relative max at x equals a um, when f prime changes 
from positive to negative you know, at x equals a. All right, and this kind of ties into what we'll call a justifying, and we'll get into that a little bit later. So f has a relative maximum at x equals a when f prime changes from positive to negative at x equals a. So you can see, again, to the left-hand side of a, f prime is positive. f is increasing. To the right-hand side of a, um, f is decreasing, which makes f prime negative. Okay, so at a, that's where the f prime changes from positive to negative. Okay, and at b, there would be a relative minimum. Uh, min, min, minimum, okay? And you can think of that kind of as the bottom of a valley, I guess you could almost think of, all right? So, again, the same idea applies. And over here, there's y values that are actually smaller than this y value would be, but, you know, if you look at an interval around b, that's the smallest uh, y value there, there is. So that's a relative minimum right there. And it's kind of the, the opposite of what occurs here. To the left of this value b, you can see how um, f is decreasing, f prime is negative, to the right f is increasing, so f prime is positive. So, what we can say for that is that f has a relative minimum at x equals b, we'll call it, you know, it could be any x value, when f prime changes from negative to positive at x equals b. Okay? So if you're asked to find a relative maximum, you're trying to look to see where does f prime change from positive to negative. If you're trying to find a relative minimum, you're trying to see where does f prime change from negative to positive. Now another thing I want to point out about this is that notice in both of those cases for the relative maximum and relative minimum what the slope was. At the top here, the slope was zero. At the bottom here, the slope was zero, okay? So, um, you know, whenever you have a slope of zero, which is where, you know, the derivative equals zero, a critical value, okay? That's a possible relative minimum or relative maximum, all right? There are times when the slope is zero where it's not a relative min or max. Let me just do a quick sketch of that real quick. Like, say y equals x cubed. It goes up and it's zero, has a slope of zero, and then continues to you know, increase. So there's actually not a relative min or max there um, you know, in that case. But you know, in most cases there tends to be. But again, it's not always true that at a, when the graph has a slope of zero, there's a relative min or max. Um, but there also could be cases where the slope isn't zero. For instance, if you had a um, graph looking like this. So at this point right here, this is an example where the graph would not, or the, I'm sorry, the derivative would not be defined. So in this case right here, this is an example where it's still it is a relative maximum. I mean, this is the largest y value in a certain region around there, but it happens, you know, it still meets the criteria that to the left f is increasing, to the right f is decreasing, so f prime changes from positive to negative at that value, but the slope isn't zero in that case. Okay, so that's kind of the one strange case where you could, you always do have to check to see as we get going on examples here, you know, when you're looking for relative extrema, it could be where the derivative is equal to zero or where the derivative is undefined. Okay?